our space trucker is on his way to Zvigelta to pick up his high-tech haul. This is the ILT container, which stands for International Low Fire Telescope. Low fire telescopes are radio telescopes, which work the same way as regular optical telescopes, except they see radio waves instead of light. Low fire is a network of radio telescopes spread the whole way across Europe. It starts in Holland and then radiates out from Holland into Paris, up into the UK and southern England, across to Germany, and then right out to Poland. But with radio telescopes, you want them to be as big as possible and as far apart as possible. So that's why we came up with the idea of placing one of these low-fire radio telescopes here in Ireland, effectively meaning that we have a radio telescope that extends from Burr in County Offaly the whole way to eastern Poland. Ryan is hauling the brains of the low-fire telescope, an extremely fragile 300,000-pound supercomputer which will process every minute bit of data it collects from outer space. The contents of this container are extremely delicate, so we have to drive very, very carefully. The problem is, we don't have a whole lot of time. This is the truck we're going to use for the job. It's a brand new Scania R580 V8 with smooth ride air suspension to make sure the load gets home safe. Unfortunately, it's not my truck, it's his. This is Noel, my sidekick. But Ryan, whose name is on the truck? <laughs> you guys ready? Let's go, let's go, let's go. The advantage of having a sidekick is that Ryan now has someone locked in a confined space upon whom he can drop some knowledge about the low-fire telescope. Basically, it's a radio telescope, but it's not like a radio dish that you might imagine or you might have seen other sort of pictures of it. It looks like more like a bunch of solar panels sort of laid out in a field, but a very, very big field. There's 96 low-band antennas and there's 96 high-band antennas. And the container we have in the back sits in the middle of the two. And the radio waves that are falling on it can be monitored. Low fire uses a technique called interferometry. So if I use the steering wheel as an example, if I have a telescope the size of the steering wheel, the level of detail I can see in the images with that telescope depends on its diameter. If I remove the middle of it, I can effectively have the same resolving power if I just have two smaller telescopes out here on the edges about 40 centimeters apart. So if you scale that up, if you have two telescopes a thousand kilometers apart, you're effectively creating a virtual telescope exactly 1,000 kilometres in diameter. So by putting Ireland in, we're going up to 2,000 kilometres. So we're doubling the longest baseline of the array. The opportunity is going to present for, for Ireland is going to be pretty big. That's given Noel something to think about. With the truck parked up for the night, Ryan explains to Noel how the low-fire telescope can help with life on the road and beyond. Pretty much everything these days relies on GPS technology. So if we have a truck here, out on the road, and your depot's back here in Dublin, the GPS signal coming from that truck has to go up to a satellite in orbit up here before it gets beamed back down to the depot here, right? But that signal has to pass through a layer of the atmosphere called the ionosphere. But when the sun becomes very, very active, it throws off a lot of radiation and energetic particles, and this layer of the ionosphere gets disturbed, which means the location of the truck is going to be off. Now, while that might not be the end of the world for driving a truck, if you're trying to land an aircraft or conduct a search and rescue operation, the uncertainty in the GPS location could be a lot more problematic. So what LOFAR is going to do is it's going to map the ionosphere much, much more accurately than we're currently able to do and give us back our more accurate GPS locations. Interesting. Interesting. Well, the universe is 13.7 uh, billion years old, give or take. So one of the really cool things about the LOFAR telescope is that it's going to be able to listen back in time to the early universe when the very first stars started to form. If you imagine a hydrogen is the most basic element in the periodic table, it consists of one proton and one electron, right? But when they collide, they can change their state and release a radio wave that's exactly 21 centimeters long. And so we can listen for that radio signature back at the very start of time. Okay, 
That's me done for today. Another <laughs> science lesson. See, you're learning.